Feral Khan Mercenary Squad has a new assignment. They must learn how to combine and form Feral Rex. The supply specialist may not be bright, but it's best to avoid Bovis when he has a tantrum. Hello, this is Sandat here, and welcome back to Feral Rex Week, Day 2, where we'll be taking a look at reformatted R03 Bovis, the supply specialist. Now, here is his box, very similar to Talon's. And in fact, Bovis was the first to be released, despite being number three. By the way, and this is a detail I may have missed in Talon's video yesterday, the reason it starts at zero 02 is because R01 is their take on six shot, known as Terminus Hexatron. So he's not part of the Feral Rex combiner. Anyways, as you can see, very nice box, very great presentation. I love the presentation on these guys, as the boxes are super nice, especially with their window box look. Looks very, very cool. My only complaint with the packaging is the weapons. Uh, getting them out isn't so bad as trying to put them back in. So they're really hard to get back in. They're really, really tight. Um, I would like to see a, maybe a different solution for that, because um, it's a little scary. Now, of course, just like with Talon, instruction book. That's also a comic book, which is pretty awesome. And a trading card, which you can see here has Bobus, supply specialist. Very nice. And his stats on the back. So you can see his stats there. Really, really cool. I love the little bonuses like the trading cards and the comics. It's kind of like how Combiner Wars has comics and trading cards, and so does Mastermind Creations, despite these coming out before Combiner Wars started. Hooray! We begin taking a look at Bovis in his bull mode. He is a two-horned bull, and that fits his idea of being an updated version of Generation 1 Tantrum. So, you know, bull. Anyways, here he is. He's a nice bull. Overall, he is quite stocky and large. Um, he is solid throughout because a lot of his parts fold in on each other to make a solid bull, which is really, really cool. As you can see, he's got hooves down here, which are black. Uh, there are red versions available that shipped with Fellow Saber. So if you did like the original red design, you can swap those in if you did get the parts from Fellow Saber. So that's pretty nice. But other than that, he's just a bull. There's not much else to him. But he does have articulation. His shoulders here are on ball joints. He has legs on ball joints. And he has hooves on ball joints. And that's for all four legs. They're the same thing. They have quite a range of movement, as well as his neck can pivot left and right slightly. It also can rotate, so he can be a confused bull. Uh, the horns as well can move, so if you, for whatever reason, want him doing that, you can totally do that. As well as the mouth can open, but if you're not careful, you start seeing a robot face. So we'll just close that a little bit. But yeah, other than that, he's a nice bull. I mean, it's a bull. There's not, there's not too many impressive things you can do with this guy in bull mode because of the fact that he's a bull and not something like an eagle that has really poseable wings and such. Now for a bull, he is quite large, uh, much like the Feral Cons are quite large. Here he is next to a Deluxe Clash Transformer. So you can see that he's about half the size of a Deluxe in bull mode, which is pretty sweet. And I feel it's, it's getting a little taller there. So you can kind of see how close he scales with uh, G1 Wrecker off-road here. So, that's awesome. But other than that, the only other thing we can really do is mount the weapons onto this guy. So he's got ports, uh, four ports in the legs, and he conveniently has four weapons. Eh, how clever is that? So these four weapons can plug onto the side of his bull mode, like this, and like this. And it works out well. They don't conflict with each other too bad, um, but you will need to be careful in posing so that you don't like cram his gun into his sword. And then as well, you can take his large uh, cannon here, and it clicks in with this little uh, little two-pronged tab, and there's a slot for it to go in back here. And it clicks in, and it is super solid, so much so that it's kind of hard to get in sometimes. But now you've got a bull that's ready to pull off a tantrum. Nah. Anyways, that is pretty much it to Bovis's bull mode. It holds weapons, it looks like a bull, that's pretty much all there is to it. Let's move on to his robot mode.
Here is Bovis in robot mode, and he's quite impressive. Overall, this figure is a lot bigger than Talon, which is good because he does cost a few dollars more. I believe he is the $110 range of pricing. There's kind of three price ranges for these guys. Um, so he is uh, more expensive than Talon, as you can see, he is taller than Talon and a lot thicker. Talon's very thin, while Bovis is very large and very in charge. Being a supply specialist kind of helps that he is kind of a tank, he's just a brick wall ready for combat. And let's get the size comparison out of the way, here he is with a Deluxe Clash Transformer. So you can see he is breaking that Voyager size, kind of leading into a small Ultra Class, which is pretty cool overall. So, that is awesome. He is quite large. But is he quite articulated? Well, he is that. As you can see, his nice uh, face sculpt up here, which there was a different face design on the uh, promotional images, and they ended up changing it for the final release, but they did include the original face with Fellow Saber. I'm going to be saying those words a lot. Anyways, as you can see, uh, head looks nice, but you can turn it left and right, uh, which pretty much it. You can click this down, and now he has a bull head, so that's really fun. I, I, I like this animal head thing they went on with the with the feral cons. Anyways, you do have that. You can have him look up, uh, but don't have him look up too far or else his face just vanishes. So there's that. Also, a little spot, Decepticon logo, uh, much like Talon. On the shoulders here, they are on ball joints, but they also have an additional hinge out, which is awesome. It's got a double giant elbow, which is kind of restrictive. They did send replacement elbows with Tigris, or was it Talon? One of those two. Um, they did send replacement elbows because these did have an issue. They couldn't straighten out because of a tab. Uh, the tab wore out on mine, so it's no longer a problem. Anyways, you do have a wrist joint here, uh, which does turn and pivot. You do have a waist joint, which has this nice gear system. These little side flaps are articulated so that these uh, legs can move out and forward and back on ratchets. And that really nice ratcheted knee, thigh swivel, ball joint, ankle, and toe joint, just like Talon. So he shares a lot of similar joint ideas with Talon, um, which is really nice. But this guy, despite being so large, is super solid. As you can see here, he can just kind of pull off a pose. Uh, you also do have the ability to adjust these flaps. You can have them in and his feet stick out more, or you can have them out and his feet can kind of cover in. And they do kind of help with the balance and stability. Overall, this guy's very impressive articulation-wise and size-wise, plus balance-wise, because, man, he should not balance as well as he does. Also, props to having minor paint on the inside of the leg. That's a neat little detail. But, of course, all this articulation can't just go to waste. He's got some weapons. Of course he has weapons. He's not only a feral con, he's a supply specialist. He better have weapons. Bovis has dual electro daggers. Much like the laser daggers of Talon. Kind of interesting, the dagger theme. Anyways, he does have dual electro daggers, and as you can see, they are quite powerful looking weapons. They have a nice blade with a ton of spikes along the edge. Now, he doesn't hold them too well. Uh, I feel like the hands were designed to hold the guns better, because he just doesn't hold these swords very well, which is kind of an issue, um, but I don't want to stress it too much. It is possible for him to hold it better, it's just you have to kind of wedge it into the hand. So these are the back guard things that are a little problematic. Anyways, they're really cool, and you can have them hold them, or you can store them on his arm or hip with the universal pegs, which is pretty cool. Plus, yeah, you could swap them over to Talon if you'd want it to. The weapons all have these nice same size pegs for everything so that they can all attach and swap around. Yeah, I like the blade on the arm thing though. I, I kind of like having him with like, oh, well if my guns can't reach him, my swords will. I've said that twice now. I have the same idea with Talon. Weird. Here are Bovis's twin catalytic carbine. Love the alliteration on that. So you can see they're twin guns that, you know, are pistols as well. So he can use these in combat. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I like the twin gun idea. I like the size of them. They're not too large, and they're not too small. They kind of fit him perfectly, which I think works really well. Plus, they have the universal peg connection, so they can work on his arms or hips. I kind of like them on his hips, because it looks like he's a cowboy, especially with the whole bull thing, which is a neat, kind of a little Wild West theme. But like I said before, I typically like the blades on the arms and the guns in the hands, so... You do have these options, though. 
Bubba's final weapon is the twin motor launcher, a giant freaking cannon. It's really, really cool. Look at these spikes on top. And what's actually the coolest part about the twin motor launcher is that it's actually the combiner kibble. Yeah, we'll see how that works later on, but this is actually the hand and foot of Feral Rex, which is super cool. And via four connection pegs on his back, you can have him carry it as a backpack, which is just awesome. And here is Bovis's kill everything mode. It's not an official mode, I just came up with it last minute, and I thought, hey, he looks really cool with all the weapons. So overall, Bovis is super solid. The Mastermind Creations plastic quality really works well with this guy, as he feels like a brick of a robot. This guy is hefty, he is heavy, he is just a chunky robot. It's really awesome. Plus, he is a leg, so that just gives so much hope for the combined mode. Now, Bovis was the first one to come out, so I've had him the longest, and I've, you know, found all the neat little tricks with him. And I gotta say that for several months there wasn't another piece, and this was the only one I had, and he definitely kept me entertained for the, for the most part. He was more exciting than any other Transformer I got that year. Um, this guy is super cool, he's super hefty, and if you want a giant bull robot, combiner or not, he's definitely worth it. Overall, I can recommend him. He is a really solid, solid transforming action figure. That's all for day two of Feral Rex Week. Tomorrow, we'll be taking a look at the big guy, Leo Ducks. Until then, be sure to check out HeroTaku.com for all your Transformers news and more. Until next time, this is saying. Goodbye.